Senator Gloria Ruoba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Allow me to start by engaging the House. When you hear anyone saying, Harambe, what's the first thing that you answer or that you think of? Nyayo. So let us not lie to ourselves because we can speak and speak and speak, but this spirit of Harambe was even a political declaration. Because harambe meant let's pull together our resources, let's come together, and then let's do what? Follow the footsteps of an individual. And that, that is what we are referring to as forefathers, yeah? But I want to pose a question. This harambe nyayo came in 19 what? If anyone, I wasn't even born, Mr. Speaker. Our forefather, our fourth grand, maybe, maybe our, our youth senator, can guide us on when Harambe was born and we said Nyayo to follow the footsteps. Huh? And, 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 and Mr. Speaker, why I start there is so that we can stop lying to ourselves that Harambe... Gloria, do you want to be informed by Senator Oburu? Yes, yes, because you know he's our youth representative and he was alive during that time. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to inform uh, my sister that this spirit of Arambi started uh, just uh, when the independence was at the corner, when there was a, an old man in Kisumu called Nomulo Harambi, and he used to call it Arambi for people to come together and pull together a rope. And there's a book written by somebody called Owino uh, Mbudo about the Harambi spirit. So Kenyatta picked it. Mze Kenyatta picked it in the struggle after he was released from detention and he started ex executing the spirit of Arambi that we pulled together to push out the colonial yoke from our country. So that is when it started, early 60s. Thank you. Senator Gloria. Thank you, my youth representative. And I like that he has said it started by an individual, a gentleman, and then it was mainstreamed by a politician for political purposes. And that is my point exactly. That we can say that it is a spirit of giving, but bottom line, when the Nyayo was put in there, it was a spirit of let us come together and let us follow this individual who is now running on something called Nyayo. And Mr. Speaker, the reason I was asking for the timelines is because I also want to ask my colleagues as we debate this bill, during that time, did we have devolved functions? Did we have structures where we can support our social systems? Did we even have uh, things that we are now calling finance bills? Were our taxes as heavy as they are today, Mr. Speaker? Because the spirit of Harambe, you can justify it and clean it up and make it look like such a beautiful thing that we must all support. But in real essence, the spirit of Harambe in 2024 is a spirit of dependency. It is a spirit of saying we are agreeing that our broken systems in healthcare, our broken systems in social services, our broken systems in the education system, in all these things, including housing, is what we are promoting so that we can now all together and say Harambe again and go back to our pockets so that we can now give money to people. Why, Mr. Speaker? It was fancy during the time when I'm sure our youth representative was a teenager. It was probably encouraged because at that time we were living in communities of social welfare. People were taking care of each other. And it was something to look up to. But today in 2024, when each individual is being encouraged to take up an income generating activity so that they can pay taxes, why then would we promote a spirit of dependency, Mr. Speaker? And without opening speech, I want to say that I support this bill because what this bill does is it forces us leaders to stop encouraging the spirit of dependency, Mr. Speaker. When I talk about the spirit of dependency, it's not just 
uh, leaders who go to Harambe's to give uh, money for funerals, to give money for, for health uh, uh, reasons and all these things. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in my circles and in my social circles, every single opportunity, we are talking about weddings, we are talking about, oh, next weekend we are going to visit so-and-so in, in whoever's house. And the first thing they do, they open a pay bill or a till number. Or they say, oh, so-and-so is collecting this number. Why? We are actually encouraging a spirit of dependency in this country. And that is the reason why I feel that some of the structures that we have in place, which we should push and make sure that we have efficiency in those structures we are so sidetracked with the fact that if someone in your family dies it is like okay uh, set up a whatsapp group collect money why we have insurance companies we have our social security fund which we should question and bring bills to this house and say this social security fund why doesn't it cater for funerals or if it caters for funerals, why can't we make it so efficient that nobody should be able to say we are collecting money for a funeral? Because the first question that Kenyans will ask you is, why are you collecting money for funerals? And yet funerals are catered for under this social security fund. So, Mr. Speaker, again I say, every single time you hear of this word Harambe, I challenge any member of this house because... I know I'm one of the youngest, and we even have younger ones, but we all remember that Harambe was Nyayo, follow an individual. And if you look at that time of that individual, we were 100% dependent on a centralized system that was govern governed by one man, and that was our former president. This being a house that supports devolution, we should be ashamed of ourselves to come and, uh, to the floor of the house and say that, uh, you know, the spirit of Harambe, churches should be built, it should not be set aside, because we should be ashamed. We should support this bill because what we are trying to say is, as the upper house, the one that protects devolution, the one that ensures that we give monies to those devolved functions on the county level, we are pushing for accountability to the extent that the healthcare works, the, 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 the housing schemes work, the education sector works, so that we do not have any reason to come here and defend any form of, uh, of, of law legislation that actually calls for us to go back to when Senator Oburu was telling me, I think he has said 1960 something, we have no business looking back and to go back and emulate what our four forefathers were doing when there was no devolution there was no technology there was no we are we are advanced so for me mr speaker i support this bill and i can tell you because some of us as much as we are in politics we probably don't fit in in this political space they, i have i have i have analyzed all the politicians in this house and if there is one thing, Mr. Speaker, politicians are afraid of, every Thursday, like today, you can see the house, people are moving in, out, in, out. Mr. Speaker, they are looking for money because tomorrow they are doing funerals. Then they have to go and contribute. Because on Saturday, they are going to go to the ground because they have to go and give money to social groups. They are in and out of this house. They are distracted that they cannot even contribute to this bill because when it strikes Thursday, Mr. Speaker, politicians are stressed. They have to go back to the grassroots. They have to go back for Harambe's. They know they have all these uh, community groups that are waiting for them in the grassroots and they are saying, Senator Umelet Angapi. So, Mr. Speaker, in that essence, what are we really doing when we are saying our 2010 constitution, which pushed for devolution of services, what are we really saying when we are saying then, okay, we don't support this bill because we want us to continue contributing? Mr. Speaker, if not for nothing, as a, as a, as a legislator who has sat in this house for two years, I can tell you that we must continue to push for services 
to be delivered 100% efficiently by government so that we can stop the spirit of dependency, which is what we are hiding behind by saying Harambe is our forefathers, Harambe is this and that. No, it is a spirit of dependency that we need to put aside and we need to really question ourselves as Africans. Mr. Speaker, I know there are those who will say that... Um, Mr. Speaker, if you can protect me from uh, Senator Mofire. No, I think he is also looking for money for this weekend's Harambe. If you can protect me. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have to say that we have a, a, a whole... Senator, Senator Mofire, what is your point of order? <laughs> your mic. I think... Speaker? Honorable Speaker, for the record, I think that's what will be struck off the record, the answer. I'm not looking for any money. If there is anything that I'm looking for, I'm looking, I'm consulting to, so that I can come towards the bill. Very well, Senator Gloria. I, I apologize, Mofire, uh, and withdraw. Mr. Speaker, I want to go to... Uh, this is uh, the memorandum of objectives and the reasons so that we can remind ourselves as to why this piece of legislation was here. Yeah, that's page uh, uh, oh, 700 and, no, what is that? 726, that's how it's paginated at the top. Uh, memorandum of objectives and reasons. Uh, on paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, paragraph 4. It clearly states that the bill is also based on the need to reduce the culture of dependency that Harambees have imbued in the society, extending even essentially private affairs to larger public. If you read further down, it says, its passage will promote the use of devolved structures as entities for promoting structured social development by ensuring that the conduct of the public appeals are approved by assessing their links to the needs and priorities of the counties. Mr. Speaker, you know one thing we have in this country, and not only this country, I think a lot of African, maybe it is our culture, I don't know, someone must do a research. We like to glorify poverty, Mr. Speaker. You know, I, I can tell you, most people, their inboxes and their phones, it starts with, Hi, Muheshimiwa, I am a single mother. My background is I was raised in the slums, blah, blah, blah. Yes, there is a majority. But we glorify poverty to the extent that it's not fancy if you are making it in life. It's not, fun, it's not a good thing if you are independent. So the fact that we have literally mainstreamed uh, glorifying poverty, not poverty, but we've mainstreamed glorifying poverty. It's like you must, there has to be a story of poverty in your life and then, then we will look at you and say, okay, now you're a leader. The fact that we have glorified that poverty has actually further pushed that bad culture of dependency. And when you every single time talk to someone and say, but don't you think if this particular service was made efficient, ah, but you know some of us, we can't, they'll always find a reason. I'll give you an example. Recently I went to um, Mama, Lucy, Mama Lucy Hospital and on a charitable, again, on a charitable initiative. And when I say charitable, again, harambe, nyayo on a charitable initiative. And, you know, and I also wanted to understand what was happening in Mama Lucy because we've had a lot of complaints. So, you know, I went around, looked at the wards. Uh, I could see definitely we have an issue with infrastructure. And I had uh, baby blankets to give out to, to the newborns. And at least on three separate occasions when I was engaging the, the, the mothers to the beneficiaries of those blankets. And one of them said, and you have not brought for us, uh, you, you've brought blankets and you've brought sanitary pads, but me, I have not gotten diapers. And you know, I had to say, okay, diapers were, were taken to the, the wing where we had about 17 abandoned babies and blah, blah, blah. And on another occasion, you, you give this and that, and they say, but you have not brought ABCD. 
And on several occasions, someone said, yeah, but you could have given us also 2,500, at least 3,000. Give us something. And I asked, um, do you have a pending bill? Do you have something, you know, is, is it that you have to pay? Isn't Linda Mama working? Say, oh, no, 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 that service is free. But since you're giving, since you're giving, and I mean, you've come with a blanket and you've come with this and you, I mean, you might as well also give money. And so that you understand how that culture is born. It's like, it's not like, thank you so much for this. It's like, give me more and give me more. And I want to say, this bill is not about politicians who are misbehaving. This bill is about every single Kenyan who is misbehaving. Because I've told you, Mr. Speaker, politicians misbehave by ensuring that they are the ones who are contributing the most to show off. But not only do they misbehave on that nature, but you know, it pushes on corrupt activities so that they can be able to fuel all their weekend harambees. But we've seen individuals in households misbehaving. I've told you, we are going to visit a neighbor, they open a WhatsApp group collect. People have killed their parents who are still alive just so they can run harambees. People have actually uh, run harambees stating that their children are sick, yet their children are not sick, just so they can run harambees and benefit. It's a whole industry. Mr. Speaker, and because of that bad behavior and bad culture of Kenyans from leadership to the bottom, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to fully support this bill because it's time that we tell each other the truth. And the truth is, as I conclude, Harambe Nyayo, the spirit of dependency. That is where this came from. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Agnes Kavindu. Thank you, Mr. 